Corticosteroids. Corticosteroids are synthetic steroid hormones made to mimic natural steroid hormones made by the adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex is part of the adrenal gland located on top of each kidney. There are several natural steroid hormones made by the body. The primary one is glucocorticoid. Gluco means glucose, corti means cortex, and coid means steroids. When you put all three together, it tells you glucocorticoid is a steroid hormone that is made in the adrenal cortex and is involved in glucose metabolism. And on top of that, it is also responsible for fat and protein metabolism, stress response, has anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive properties. The most well-known example of glucocorticoid is cortisol. So remember, glucocorticoid such as cortisol is produced by the body, and corticosteroids are synthetic steroids, which is what the rest of the video is focused on. Corticosteroids are used in a variety of conditions. They are used as a replacement therapy in adrenal insufficiency, or Addison's disease. As an immunosuppressant to prevent organ transplant rejection and to treat autoimmune disorders. They are also used to reduce inflammation in conditions like COPD, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, and cerebral edema. Examples of corticosteroids Steroids come in many forms such as PO, IV, IM, inhaled, nasal spray, and topical applications. Prednisone is an oral steroid and is only available in the PO form, while dexamethasone is available in PO, IM, and IV form. And it is also longer-acting and more potent than prednisone. Dexamethasone is commonly used to reduce swelling and inflammation in the brain and spinal cord injury. Fluticasone is used as maintenance therapy in asthma in the PO form. It is also available as a nasal spray, used for non-allergic rhinitis. Hydrocortisone cream is used for skin inflammation and pruritus. Betamethasone is given to pregnant mothers at risk for preterm delivery as an IM injection, and it helps with lung development in preterm fetus. As you may have noticed, corticosteroids mostly end with the suffix S-O-N-E. You don't need to memorize all of these names for the NCLEX, but rather, focus on the side effects and nursing interventions for steroids which are high-yield topics on NCLEX. Side Effect and Precautions As mentioned earlier, steroids have immunosuppressive properties. Because of that, it is important to educate patients to report signs and symptoms of infection such as fever, sore throat, and dysuria, or pain with urination. That's why steroids are contraindicated in those with active infection. It can also delay wound healing. Steroids can cause edema and swelling due to its sodium and water retention property. Educate patients to check daily weight and report if there is a sudden weight gain, such as gaining one pound in one day or two to three pounds in a few days, which indicates fluid overload. Steroids can cause mood swings, restlessness, and insomnia. Daily doses should be taken in the morning. Monitor for hyperglycemia or elevated blood glucose, especially in diabetic patients, and adjust insulin regimen as needed. Long-term use of steroids can cause osteoporosis. Educate patients to take calcium and vitamin D supplements as prescribed. Steroids should be taken with food to prevent gastric or peptic ulcers. PPIs such as Protonix may be prescribed to prevent ulcers. Avoid taking aspirin or NSAID concurrently because they both increase risk of GI bleed. Steroids also have an increased risk for cataracts with long-term use. Dose adjusting. Doses of steroid need to be increased during times of stress, infection, or before major surgeries. And if steroids are no longer indicated, doses needs to be tapered off slowly so that the body has time to adjust to the change and produce its own steroid hormones. Never stop steroids abruptly because it can lead to Addisonian crisis, which is a life-threatening condition due to severe cortisol and aldosterone insufficiency.